Hello and welcome to Political Voice. I am Moses Humphrey. Well, it's the political season here in Nigeria, and already a truckload of cases are pending before the Presidential Election Petitions Court. But one case that has already been decided is that of a governorship election because the Supreme Court yesterday affirmed the election of Ademola Dilike as the governor of Oshun State. Oh well, um, delivering judgment yesterday, a five-member panel of the Apex Court held that the Court of Appeal correctly reinstated Adeleke as governor. In March, the Court of Appeal seating in Abuja reinstated Adeleke as the governor of Oshun State. A three-member panel of justices of the court held that the Oshun Election Tribunal erred when it ruled that the first and second respondents, uh, persons of Guyega Oyetola and the All Progressives Congress, proved their allegation of overvoting. Well, according to the panel of judges, Adilike is the duly elected governor of the state, and the Oshun Governorship Election Tribunal uh, in January held that Oyetola was able to prove that there was overvoting in some of the polling units. Consequently, the majority judgment of the tribunal ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to withdraw the certificate of return issued to Adeleke and issue a fresh one to Oyetola as the duly elected governor of Oshun State. Now, dissatisfied with the ruling, Adeleke appealed the judgment at the Court of Appeal. In August 2022, Goyega Oyetola, former Oshun State governor, and the APC petitioned the tribunal to challenge the victory of Adeleke. Well, among several issues, Oyetola contended that there was overvoting in 749 polling units across 10 local government areas of the state. Oh, well. Joining me to make sense out of this is uh, Cyril Abaku, VOP in-house public affairs analyst. Um, welcome to the show, Cyril. Thank you. Now, looking at uh, Governor Dilike, and uh, he can, can he, we can finally heave a sigh of relief, all right, that um, certainly the judiciary works, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, is it okay to say that truly, and in fact, it's been said that truly the judiciary is the last hope of the common man? <laughs> or of any man in search of justice. Of, or any man in search of justice. Uh, because it does, it does seem to me that Governor Ilike is not quite the common man. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 yes, but uh, yes. So, but to, to that extent, I think the judiciary, um, whenever it acquits itself, uh, will always come through this way. First of all, Governor Adeleke, for the mere fact that he is in the PDP, uh, goes clearly to show that he was an opposition governor, and by history, by sheer history, uh, opposition governors haven't fared too well when mm. it comes to see, get, getting just. I mean, this is a fact that is known only too well. But um, ousting the incumbent, ousting an incumbent, and then going to court to challenge mm. uh, when there is federal power, and federal might to you know. Uh, so, but I mean, it's a good thing to see. Judgment came out yesterday, and the president came out congratulated him. We saw. Even uh, the president elect, president elect congratulated mm -hmm. him. People from, I think this is one judgment that has sort of um, brought people from across the aisle to join forces to say, we commend, um, we, we are happy that you won. We hope that this um, is good for democracy. The president, I think, did say that this was he, uh, more like a legacy judgment. Even if I personally do not think that he should have interfered or he could have had his way you know, um, in the outcome. But the president did come out to say that he was also happy. So, I mean, everybody seems to be happy. Well, not so much because a PDP governor won, but in my view, because as it were, um, judgment that stemmed from justice or, just, or, or justice that led to a judgment is what we have now. You know, they always talk about judgment and justice as being two these things. Yeah, wasn't it, wasn't it obvious that it was going to go this way? Because um, looking at overvoting and then INEC um, using the beavers, if it had gone the other way, wouldn't it have been uh, bad for the image of INEC and the beavers that it, uh, 
that he put into use during that election? No, I mean, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. Um, I can't agree more. The reality is that what we saw play out in Ocean State is what we've seen play out in a lot of places. And this is not even about Governor Yetola is legal to anything. Sometimes there's what they call, what I refer to as um, judicial or legal opportunism. Sometimes it's not enough that the law says right is right and left is left. No, you don't. That's not the law. The law is when you go to court and you can convince a judge and you make an argument saying that this, that when the law says right is right, this, was, this is what, that was the letter. But the intent of that law, so there is the issue of the spirit of the letters and the letters as letters in, in, you know, in and of themselves. So they have gone to court, they've, they, they, they've, they've placed the argument before, before the court, a good thing, uh, matters like this are not, are not decided by just a judge. In the first instance, there, there were, I think, about three of them. This, this one now had about five of them, mm -hmm. you know, in which they are able to look at the case and assess the argument and then weigh the evidence, okay? And then critically come up with a, with a judgment that, um, like I said, conveys justice. A judgment is not what we need in itself. A judgment is only a conveyor, a conveyor, a, a, a conveyor belt for justice. If a judgment cannot deliver justice, then it is, 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 you know, it's, a, it's a waste of the paper on which it is written. But when justice is to be done, we need a judgment that conveys that justice. So whether it was a justice that found a judgment that spoke its mind, or it was a judgment that found, that found justice to deliver, which either way, there's been judgment and there's been justice as it were. So that's uh, for me. Now you are asking whether uh, this was not something that was um, that had been foreseen. Like I well, you know, sometimes the way you look at things and the way they appear in court are totally different. In fact, sometimes you hear uh, lawyers talking in court and you wonder whether these people are the same people you know, or whether there's 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 animosity or something. But the fact is, uh, like they say, the courts are not Santa Claus. The judge is not for that Christmas. It is what you bring before the court that is used to judge a case. So, um, Governor Yele, Governor um, Adeleke, Adeleke looked to me, actually, Adeleke. yes, looked to me, actually, to be in poll, that is, had the advantage that has become uh, what, it, what it became at the, at the Supreme Court. But, you know, you, you, you never know how these things play out sometimes, how um, the judges... But it should, have been, it, it should have been weird to, to uh, talk about overvoting, where the beavers was used. That's my point. <laughs> it would have been, you know, totally out of place because then, INEC would have been called to question. No, the good thing is, is, is even that, as it is right now, um, I'm not sure any lawyer in his right mind will carry this same ground that has been ruled by the Supreme Court as a ground for asking a court to overturn any judgment again. Mm. Any election not coming, so you know, that's that's the advantage. I'm never, I've never once been angry the way lawyers go to court and say mm -hmm. it's fine. Once a judgment has been given, you have covered, you have pre you are what you've done is that you've, you've not yes filled, yes and yes. Put that side away. That's one of the benefits of law. And like I always say, look, we can develop, we can grow, we can evolve. As a matter of fact, this the civilization we seek can even come to the courts. It can come to the market, it can come to the courts. Even, uh, Moses, when we talk about our constitution and the issues that are involved in it and all the aberrations, I can tell you that if we went, if we, if we began to go to court to challenge certain provisions and we begin to get judgments, when you hear that the, that the judgment of uh, the court of, that um, England oppressed by, by an unwritten constitution, what, what, what does that mean? It simply tells you that the laws of that country are not written on a single document. It, 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 it means that um, court judgments, for example, are a, are a veritable instrument of statute. That is uh, a body of laws on their own. There are customs, then some... So it means that the, the laws are, is not written in one particular document. You can mm -hmm. cite different papers. In Nigeria too, for example, you see, if you want to deal with the issue of uh, laws that are not serving the purpose and so on, we can be going to court and gradually get judgments. Mm -hmm. that, gradually. Yeah, that, that, but, but you see, the, for example, until Governor, uh, until the president of the candidate of the Liberal Party, Peter, we went to court.
to challenge the validity of the of the of, of his impeachment you know was his impeachment on gender issue he, he it was he that began this process of a governor whose term begins outside of may 29 mm. he went before the court to pray and said on grounds one two three i have come to and the court said well of course it is true and even though the other the the uh, the governor that was on seat at the time had, you know, had gone had, far yes, into the had, tenure. Yes, had gone into, but they said, the court said, no, go back and take back your mandate and begin from that day. You know, the lady justice is blind. She does not see. Uh, so she doesn't care. And for her, judgment is, she, she must deliver, and that's what she, she must deliver judgment, and that's what she did. So, I mean, seeing what has happened in our streets, happened now, the reality is that in the case of governor, Ademola Adeleke, the the pressure or the the sort of push that came into the whole process, I think that the National Judicial Commission may need at some point to look into when a judgment that came from a lower court is substantially different from that coming from the higher courts. I think that there should always be there should in fact be an ongoing investigative process in which mechanism that allows for an for for a thorough reassessment is it that there was new evidence is it that there was new uh, fresh arguments was or did a change of counsel lead to uh, the change in outcome otherwise if a lower court has determined that this is the problem that that this matter couldn't have gone the way you know that that the matter should go a certain way and by the time the matter that same matter is going up to higher courts particularly for political cases the matter is not being significantly you know um it's not different from the judgment of the lower court i think because the way we have come in this country to um over judicialize the electoral process the pressure you, you even had when the PDP said that they are trying to compromise the, the judges of this current mm -hmm. um presidential tri um, tribunal trial, yes so i think that we need to investigate every single political case to know particularly when one, i mean we saw the one of a boy state one court said the governor should vacate office he said it was not going anywhere and it didn't go anywhere then another court said the governor should stay back in office come on come on come on judges trained in nigeria using the same laws under the same circumstances the same arguments on the same case. On the same case, indeed. One court says one court of one one court says no. A court of coordinate jurisdiction says yes. This is a travesty of justice. Mm. It, it should be unheard of. Alas, we hear of it every day. Okay, now um, in light of uh, pending cases in the elections petitions tri tribunal if we want to juxtapose um you know the cases there and what ha what has happened in our shoe state what should we expect is this is this um good things ahead can people say yes let us you know let the faith in the judiciary be reawakened okay so yes here's what i'm going to say um first is to say that if you look at the public reaction to the judgment of the Supreme Court, it does seem that people are happy. Even the APC, as we know the APC, for what we know the APC to be, he has congratulated the Bola Tinubu, the Bola congratulated. Did they have a choice? Could they have, well, could they have decided not to? <laughs> excuse me, but they have. They've congratulated the governor of Washington State. Number two, in spite of the court cases, he was sworn in as governor. The matter has been in court, I think, since August last year, August. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the governor has been in office since that time. Now, um, it doesn't appear to be like the governor used his powers or his office to um, determine the outcome of the process. Because, like I said, he's a sitting governor of an opposition party. It could have been easier for federal might and power to intervene. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, and if we all accept that uh, this can be until the laws, until the laws are changed, I think that it is important for us to realize 
uh, that um, if a, if someone has been elected governor, or president, or councillor, or anything like that, or even member member of our assembly, the law has not changed. We can't now be making calls that are anti-constitution, that are anti-democracy, that can see this country born. We don't want that. He was sworn in, but there was a legal challenge. He came in to unseat a sitting opposition governor. Governor Ito is of the APC, he is of the PDP. As the is a PDP governor. Yes, sir. He came in to unseat a sitting governor of the AP of the ruling party. And even when the matter went to court, it could not be overturned. I democracy couldn't be more beautiful as he, I mean mm. but then, yes, yes, yes. So we should not we should not make comments and device rhetoric that can make this country born. It will not be worth it. The president elect we are hoping and praying that uh, going forward election dispute issues should be resolved within 14 days. But for now we are at the mercy of the tribunal. If they, in their own wisdom, see to it that it is that it will be better, much, much better for them to decide the outcome of the election before May 29, if they are able to do that, it's fine. But even if they are not, I mean, the court cases will continue. This is why we have laws and institutions. It's not enough for us to, for, for us to begin to invent a law that didn't exist before. I don't think that will pay anybody any good. But for now, seeing the way the public um, perception has, welcome the judgment mm -hmm. it shows that people are taking keen interest in the judicial process not least with the presidential uh, petition court which in my view should allow us to see whatever is going on there live and direct all right so what, let's not let's not delve too too far into uh, the elections petitions case uh, um court cases mm -hmm. now let's Staying with um, the Oshun State um, Court case, uh, staying with that result, what would you say that was evident to the Supreme Court that uh, the lower courts did not see? Uh, well, because um, at the time the lower courts gave judgment in the two to one ruling, there were three just justices or judges that were in that case. One said he didn't see any reason why the governor should be asked to vacate office. The other said he saw reason. The third person that said he, I think it was a lady, I can't pick it now, didn't write the judgment. Okay. Just so it wasn't balanced. And I said, this is a serious matter. Why won't you? So that sort of left a, an aching tooth, tooth, uh, tooth in the one I was speaking. I, I, I don't know if the person later came and wrote the judgment. I think it was a lady, a, judge, a, a lady judge. But there was no judgment written. And it was a cause for concern. So I thought that um, when the matter would have been taken up, more senior, more learned judges should be able to look now into the nitty gritty and properly put this matter. And I'm glad that was what appeared to have happened now. Mm. So it is either the lower court saw and didn't wish to see, you know, that's like saying saw and, and prefer to keep quiet, or they indeed um, didn't see, which could have been oversight. But I do know that uh, political cases, the arguments are always very robust, the debates are always very engaging, because people, this is people's political destiny is at stake, so they will bring everything they have into the matter, if only to make sure that they win the cases. But um, it will not be bad or out of place if the NJC, that is, that is the National Judicial Commission, is able to come in to look at, to look critically at the matter and say, did the lower courts err? And was and those, did they err by omission or by commission? If it was an, an error of commission, I think somebody must, must be brought to book. Because the fact is, every whatever thing we lose at the level of the courts, we cannot get it back any other place. Mm. I mean, it's true. Do you see how important the courts are, uh, Moses? Democracy, as we always say, is government of the people, by the people and for the people. A government instituted by the people for themselves. Yet, we accept as a people that where we, uh, the expression of our mandate is not, is not easily realized, okay, that the courts have the power 
to do for us what we ought to be doing for, for ourselves. ourselves. Do you know how serious and how grave such a matter is? It is extremely grave. It means that for a moment, the people, all, all Nigerians have relinquished and surrendered their rights into the hands of two or three judges mm. and said, hold it in trust for us. Look at this case. And once they carry the gavel and they hit it on the... That does it. That does it. That, it means that we are not supposed to be packing too much pressure on, that, on those people because there are few. Because they are human. The yes. Of, of millions. But alas, what have we seen in the past, in the, let me even just say in the past 10 years, we've seen whole governors, uh, assembly members, all sorts of, so many of them. A judgment. We'll look at the university, for example, where the, and this was a, a, a PDP affair. It was not even a university. It was, it was a PDP affair. Where somebody either ran for primary or didn't run, um, former Governor Mechi. Okay, yeah. No, he ran for in the primaries, but I think someone, anyway, the party fielded another person to run for governor, and the person won the election. When the elections were won, there was a problem because Amechi went to court to say he was the validly elected candidate of the of PDP. The what is Supreme, the Supreme Court said, we are going, and this is this uh, Christ, the Supreme Court said that, that they are going to trace that mandate to where it was at the time. Mm -hmm. They didn't even say, you are the original candidate of the party. So if they say the party should hold primaries now, Moses, at, at that time, it means that that primaries will be in vain. Or if they say, go back and be the party's flag bearer, if he, if he took the party's flag, the, the party is already governor. Does it mean that they will now come for, for fresh elections? They, they just say, you know what? You are not only going to take a party flag, you are going to trace that flag to, to how, however it has traveled. Mm -hmm. They found the, the flag in government house, sitting on the governor's chair. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the description that you're putting to it. <laughs> they said, flag, give way. Your real owner has come. They, that same day, the governor came to Port Harcourt. The, the former governor left, where walked away. And Mr. Mechi became governor of River State. Hmm. Now, as beautiful as that may be, judicially speaking, the reality is that it is the people who ultimately should be electing the leaders. The earlier, and I think, you know, I mean, give, how can we make our elections to be less combative, to be less con uh, contestatious, to be less, um, 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 uh, to be less of sabar rattling and warmongering? The simple thing for us to do is to make sure, is to make absolutely sure that we sanitize the process, not only not only beavers. Beavers should be a civilization for the current time. Not only beavers. We need to come to the point where, one, elections, registration, accreditation, voting, transmission of results are as seamless as possible. Seamlessly and seamlessly done electronically. Mm. You see, the way we run for elections today, we have people who will abandon everything we are doing on election day. People have to troop out to elect like, polling units. People have to... It, it's just civilization. Le and let me say this. America was here, was at this level at the time. They were not getting the best out of it. I'll give an example. President William McKinley was the 25th president of the United States. How old was America at that time? Well, I mean, if they gained independence in 1770 six right by 1778 they were a hundred years old okay and mckinley was assassinated in 1901 so you, you see the time more than 100 years, years later so let's let's cut my jury some some slack there. no 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 no, no we can't te technological advances i mean <laughs> te technology has advanced significantly otherwise we would say let everything we take from america let's take it back to them including the civilization that is called president presidential system of government we took from them. The, the technology is there for us to, you know, also borrow. To ride on. To ride on, to borrow and use. The, because the current arrangement that, that, that we're using today just wouldn't deliver the kind of leaders, leaders that we're looking for. And I won't be surprised. This are, maybe this is a discussion for another day. But I won't be surprised if we don't even use beavers in 2027. Mm. I will not be surprised. 
Well, if if well, I. I'm sure that a lot of Nigerians would not uh, would not want to align with this. They would they would prefer that the beavers is strengthened and used, or something better than the beavers is used. <laughs> I, yeah, that's a satirical laughter. But <laughs> we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue with the conversation. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. It's still Political Voice, and um, with me is uh, Cyril Abaku, VOP pol uh, Public Affairs Analyst. Now, Cyril, yes. this judgment, uh, you know, the Austrian State judgment affirming Nadeleke's victory, seemed to be one that a lot of people had no contentions with. You know, like a lot of people just say, okay, yes, it was, it's the right thing to do. What do you make of that? No, the... Like Nigerians know what is right and you know how it should be, and because the the past one year has brought us to a point where people now take more than a passing interest in the political process. As a matter of fact, you know, in my own at home, I teach my I I, I teach the family how to spot fake news and things like that, hmm. and they've come to learn some of those. So the other day I sent a story on, I said, this is, it. Said, this can be true. <laughs> this can be true. So, you know, they have been equipped to learn. People are, because people are asking questions. In the, you, 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 you'd be amazed. University undergraduates, um, bricklayers, um, um, masons, what, mechanizers. People are asking. Artisans. They're asking. So, if laundry, you know, wash, wash, I mean, they're asking. Them. So, if, now I'm an intake queen. So, if, you, you know, all these kind of mm. things. People are taking it, so they as it well. That, that that's why I said this is a judgment that appears to convey justice, and they know when it is done. Even if they don't know, people on the ground in Ocean State who voted can tell you, for example, how the votes went. So there will be no even if it's not for the legal uh, merit of the case. If there was any sort of uh, collusion by security agencies or any attempt by a government or INF or anybody to to make the process unwholesome. People will believe that if they had not interfered, we would have voted for this person. So even on that uninformed, on um on enlightened ground, seeing this sort of judgment, people will say, hey now you know so, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me I think that look it is important that we get it right right politically. When people get the leaders they want, you can't tell them you, you couldn't you couldn't possibly come and um, and, and, and they have, when that leader doesn't do what they want them what, what they want to do, they, they they'll be glad to own the blame. Than that they, you impose somebody on them. You know, it's like when people say, Thank God Buhari was president of Nigeria. Because if he hadn't been, we would have been told that we missed our Messiah. But now he's been president and we've seen how he's performed. So Governor Delic of Washington State, because I mean, going into the elections in, 20, in 2020, was it, was it 2022? And before then, 2017 or 18. I saw how people in Washington State came out and were mobilized, you know, and how they wanted to vote. How the people that were on the ballot, the names, the ticket, the, that is to say, maybe some, if it's like someone from Badagre, people from Ikorodu, that sort of thing, the, the ethnic the local government areas in from which the, 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 the candidates and the deputies are drawn. I think that somehow um, Governor Deleke had an edge, to be, to, be, to be fair and to be very honest, had an edge. Um, and indeed, the second time, he was second time lucky, okay? Now, having also gone to the tribunal, the tribunal, the, the, now that we've accepted the corporate and he has been affirmed to win, it means that electorally, he has won. Judicially, he has also won. won. Now, what that means is that there will be no distraction anymore because, quite frankly speaking, court processes often distract. I, I, mean, the, so, I, I, I can't believe that the governor has been at his best. I was going to ask, that's, that, was, that was my next question. Um, how the state has fared, 
how has governance been affected in the state since August last, last, year. last year up until this time? That's uh, over six months. Because it is, and I'm glad that this matter was done with, was done away with, was is this is this how dispatched. how how speedy it's no now it the be. governor regbe shala for shun state i think uh 2007 his case wasn't decided on 2010 or 2011 yes you know um adam so the same thing um which other governor um is it ondo or so even by Elsa, you know where uh, Kogitu now is in that same class, you know, where the court case is dragged on for like a year or two, you're paying legal fees or doing this and that. For me, a sitting governor who now has the, the challenge, you know, the problem of having to deal with, uh, for, uh, with, with legal battles, he will have to pay attention to what, because no matter what he wants to do, no matter what lofty, achievements that he wants to record, a, 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 if within a year he's out of office, what has he done? So he, he will have to pay attention to the legal um, tussle. And so and when that is the case, I believe that it sort of really distracts, it distracts them a whole lot. Uh, but thank God that within six months, this was done and, 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 and dusted with, and that um, Hopefully, Governor Deleke can now go back to fully concentrate on whatever it, it is he had in mind to do for Oshun people. Oshun State is not where it ought to be. It has natural resources, but it, they are not properly being harnessed. You know, um, gold in Elisha, uh, all sorts. I mean, they are, they, are, they are in a good place, you know, even in the area but of tourism. Not the best place. Yes, well, good, but not the best, of course. Um, tourism and so on. So it will only be fair. And good to the, to the people, to the uh, to the to the citizens of Oyo State, to see that their governor can now pay full attention mm -hmm. to the business of governance, and we hope that um, he he succeeds. We hope he succeeds. All right. Now, um, for things to come, let's look at uh, things to come. Let's touch on that again. We've had issues where some. Uh, presidential aspirants or candidates have said, oh, the judiciary is being influenced and uh, they are calling for, you know, the, the live broadcast of uh, the election petitions tribunal. Be calling for, so the public will know. Now, this process in Australia State was not, you know, I mean, Televised. The, yes, the public, they have the opportunity to follow it. Now, do you think, did that make, make a difference? Do you think it will make a difference when it comes to the presidential elections petitions tribunal? Uh, well, you whether know, it's put in in public view or not. So I think it's important that the presidential election is put in public view. In fact, the electoral act should be amended to make it a a a, a condition okay. that. Election petitions should be aired on TV, should be aired on live TV. It should be. There is good reason. Look, our politicians have not given us room to believe that. If you, leave, if you left it to them, they will get it right. They have not given us room to believe, to accept it. They have not given us room. They have not given us that room. They have not. So showing it live on TV will help to sanitize the process. Look, there are people who, who have suffered, who have... Who have out, who, are, who have borne the, the sheer pain of going to court and when the matter, a matter of principle is put before them, you just you can't imagine how a judge will give ruling and you're like how did that even happen? How did that even come to stand? What in the world? I'll show you an example. After the first uh, sitting, the first, um, the court of first instance gave the judgment to Oyetola. All the other way through, it's been a delicate. So, you either give it to us, no, but I think you need to give it to us. Broadcast is live. Otherwise, the NGC should investigate the, the other sittings and tell us whether the judges committed errors by omission or by commission. It's important. 
Now, Moses, you want me to touch on something very, very um, sensitive. Sometimes it is also possible that in the spirit of give and take, politicians, in the end, it's not it's, it's not by the outcome of a court judgment. It it is is mostly about what perhaps they might have gone to agree behind the scenes that nobody knows anything about. Mm -hmm. One person could come, uh, withdraw his case, or tell his lawyers to basically stand down and just let that, that matter okay. pass. Yeah, so all of, all of these are possibilities. But when the matter is decided, sorry, when, when the matter is televised, people can see, we can make sense of, because what they're debating that is not a personal interest is the destiny of the country. Why shouldn't we see what's going on? For me, that's the way to go, is the future. You can't use one person's judgment. So, the Governor Delic is one person. How, how, how about the many others, the, 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 the many more who, uh, who are beneficiaries of injustice? I'll give one example. Two, people who didn't contest in the primaries have had court rule that they were the legitimate candidates of their, their parties. parties. Oh, come on. Come on. Do you have to be a lawyer to know that that's, that's a travesty? That that's a miscarriage of justice? That, 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 that that's a judicial abortion? Oh. Eh? People that didn't participate in party primaries are now, it is now being ruled that they are the, candid, the, the, the authentic candidates of the parties. This is, you are, you are turning us into a joke. Believe me, don't you think we want to know what was debated in court? Of course, Nigerians would want to know. We would like to know real time. Let, let's even just watch and say, what did this judge tell? What did this lawyer tell the judge? What if there's the tender? What did he really say that that made the judge to realize? And say, oh, that's true. I remember mm. many times Chief Ganifer me as as lawyer to the NRC will say, this judge is capable of judgment and out of justice. We are going to appeal this judgment. I've had Ganifer say, I mean, Ganifer of blessed memory, Ganifer what I mean. He will say sort of things. And then I didn't understand what, what judgment and, and justice, justice meant. But today, we, I mean, we have the benefit of it is important. Show this this city's life. The way we are happy with the outcome of um, Oshun, well, the way there's happiness with that Oshun, I think the same thing should happen with every case going forward. Mm. Sokoto, Niger, Kaduna, because the fact is that we are going to get a flurry of court cases against a lot of this election that took place this year. So, the ally woke up to do, even if we are going to have sittings in more than 30 courts of law, it's fine. The Federal Ministry of uh, Information and Culture should provide the needed, uh, or they should, yeah, should provide the needed um, cameras and stuff. All the, all the NJC can have their own, Minister of Justice can have its own. Deploy them to all the courts across the country. Let us watch. Equilimado was sentenced, they didn't watch it on TV. Equilimado was sentenced in the UK. We, we've seen the videotape of the judge sentencing him to, to jail. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're not. Good. So what, I mean, in Nigeria, sometimes I, I, I just can't imagine what the... The only time you may not be able to do that is during criminal, you know, like serious criminal cases. Especially where people will have to testify. Testify. You don't do that so that um, people don't become targeted. Uh, and in any case, because an innocent person is innocent until he's been proven guilty. guilty. Nigeria practices criminal law. In France, in France, they practice civil law. When the person is declared guilty, he is guilty until proven innocent, right? So this is the way it should be. When we say somebody is guilty, no problem. But, sorry, when we say an election has been won and lost, and somebody says, I don't think I lost lawfully. Come on. Let's go to court. Let's, let's let those who... On, on whose behalf you're making the claim, also see how that case plays out. So I think it is extremely important. Um, the, the propriety, the everything right about Oshun should be replicated in the presidential election, Petitions Court. We, we don't want to be getting reports of what happened there. All right. We want Better to, that we we follow want the to process. see it ourselves. It should be in every home, in marketplaces, in fact, it should be so serious that on major streets and marketplaces, the way people mount monitors to watch football, uh, football matches. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nigeria, you see, the momentum we've built in the past one year that has been able to become 
very aware and conscious of the political process should not be allowed to whittle, to, to whittle down or to dwindle. We need to now go out there to make people come into what, because it's their own. A president of a country belongs to everybody. He does not belong to himself alone. Mm -hmm. So if he's going to be our property, we need to see how he emerges president. All right, that's talking about the uh, presidential elections petitions going on at the tribunal. Uh, we do hope that, you know, uh, the prayers of uh, the presidential candidate of the PDP, Atuka Ubaka, and some of the presidents will be granted for a live broadcast. Now, taking it back to Oshun State, uh, we've seen jubilations, we've seen celebrations in Oshun State as they are jubilant that indeed the mandate of the uh, the governor, Governor Adiriki, was um, affirmed, upheld and affirmed. And uh, right here, we at Voice of the People, VOP TV, join our voice to celebrate and congratulate the governor of Oshun State. Well, I guess that's uh, that's us calling today on Political Voice today. I must say a very big thank you to Cyril Abaku, VOP in-house political and public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for coming on the program. My pleasure. My name is Moses Humphrey. Don't forget to follow us on social media. On YouTube, we are Voice of the People TV and on other social media platforms, VOP TV Live. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.